this is a series of videos. I've got my uh, assistant here, Joel, Joel Roberts. Uh, he's one of my black belts. Say good day, everyone. Joel. Uh, Joel. Uh, now, this, this particular video that we're doing, remember I did all the hand techniques. You'll see the series of videos on the um, um, options page that I've got on um, Yunjundo slash Healy or Commando Krav Maga Australia. So when you have a look at those videos, I've done them all in front of the camera, but you haven't seen them done with a partner. So in this particular video, we're just going to go through the hand techniques. The first hand technique is um, the countering to a straight left. So you'll, my back will be to the camera, that's fine. You'll see uh, Joel's good looking face, that's, that's fine. So you'll be able to see the technique and we'll draw that into the camera so you, well, you can follow it. So this is all about teaching. We're not trying to show off or anything like that. Uh, so first of all, uh, Joel's going to throw a straight left. So as Joel throws a straight left, I, and I can look at the camera, I'm palming that, as you see there. So he throws a straight left, I palm, and then I go in for the back fist. Back fist or back palm. So he goes one, bang, bang. Right? Do it again, two, bang. Do it again, three, bang. Okay, now you can follow up from that. Uh, I just suggested just to do that particular one, but you can follow up from that and do bang, bang, left, reaping hook, etc. So this is how it goes. One, here, one, two, three, four. Okay, watch that again. So here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, you can expand that technique. Now, say if someone throws a right hand. So with what we're doing in what I call the toolbox option, we've got, if anyone throws anything, we'll have the answer to it. That's what I want people to do when they look at these videos. You want to say, okay, he does this. If someone does that, we can do that. Say someone throws a right hand. So here's Joel, throws the right hand, boom. Maybe I can move away. Two throws the right hand, I trap it. And when I trap it, I just tap it. So, okay, throws the right hand, tap, and then bang. So we just come around a little bit so you can see that. So we'll just move around, I know exactly how that works. So he throws the right hand, boom, and you can see where this is going here. Right, so he throws a bit faster, bang, bang. You see, it works really well. Now, he throws that left hand, so you're seeing that from a different angle now. One, bang, 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 Bang. So you saw it from that angle before. This is the other angle where you can't see what I'm doing on this side. But the right hand, you can. So right hand, bonk. Bonk. Right? Okay, we'll swap around again. See, that way people can't see. They can't see the technique. So, <clears throat> okay, so. Okay, Joel throws a right hand again. And I step to the side. A right hand, step to the side. I pull the knee in. All right, we move around the other way. So he throws the right hand, I step to the side, and I pull the knee in. See it again? Here I step, my hands are up, and I step, pull the knee in. Easy, okay. Comes around again. This time he throws the right hand and I go underneath. So he throws the right hand, I go underneath. Again, throws the right hand, I go underneath. We'll look at the other way. So this is working as good this way. He throws the right hand, boom, I'm underneath. So when I'm underneath, you see that guard, I don't really do much with that, I just, what you call, slip the punch. Now when I slip the punch, this can also go up this way. This can also go to the crab's claw this way. So I'll just show you get around the other way. Throws the right hand, I go underneath. Throws the right hand, I go up the top. Throws the right hand, crab's claw, right? Okay, so that's if someone throws a right hand, throws a left hand. Now with the left hand, we'll do what we call the hooking block procedure. So here's Joel, it, it, like we can see it this way. He throws that left hand and I come through on a hooking block. So here I am, I'm a little bit confined because of the space we've got here. Normally I'd move a little bit further out but I'll be out of vision. So as he throws the left hand, I move to the right, and you'll notice this hook block goes over. That's a hook block. It goes over, and I grab. I could grab anywhere there. And then I step in, one to the ribs, pull, one to the side of the jaw, or the vital point behind the ear. So just watch that again. 
throws the left hand, I move to the side, I grab, underneath, over the top. Round the back, you've got a whole lot of options, don't want to get too complicated. Right, so you've got straight left, right cross, and the swinging punch is what, that's, that's all the punches there is, there isn't any other punches. Straight left, right cross, swinging, or a big swing. So Joel's going to do a swing now. <clears throat> So if he swings, I can either step out of the way, or I get it, or I intercept it. So one, he swings, I step out of the way. When he swings, it'll go, you know, he will go with it. And just do that again. So I step out of the way, or I lean back. His hand goes, and just hold it there, keep going, here. Now this hand can just go whack straight there, or I can do the neck takedown there, and I come in, take him down that way. All right, now we'll do that opposite here. So he does a swing, sorry, back this way. Joel does a swing with the right hand, right, I step away. He does it again, step away, and watch where my hand goes. It goes here, bang, and I take him out that way. Now there's several versions of that. We're keeping it simple. Now the other thing I can do is I can intercept the right swing and uh, with just with a forearm block. So all these basic techniques that we do have application. So just step in a little bit there, that's right, we're in the camera now. So Joel's doing the right swing again, I'm here, right swing, I intercept it. Right, so I'll come around so the camera can see that. Does the right swing again, I intercept it. Now I intercept it with the standard forearm block. Now watch carefully what I do here. One, I intercept, pull the hand back, spear finger jab. Now that's pretty simple, the old Bruce Lee move. Bang, straight the eye with the spear, the spear finger. Or, watch what I do again. He comes bang, I block, my hand goes around, take him out that way when I lock the arm. Now just watch that one again. Here, I check it, wrap it, wrap it, take him out that way. All right, there's a few, thanks Joel, thanks for that. Nice. There's a few little techniques that we do that you can add into your toolbox. More coming up sh shortly. The next ones we'll do a couple of kicking techniques. Thanks for watching. Okay, next move, we're just a little bit of warming up and there's a series of skills and drills that I've developed where you'll see these in the patterns. And remember I said to you before regarding the patterns, it's not about the patterns at all, it's about the skills and drills. So the Grandmaster would train one particular technique, like his branding technique is a vertical side kick. He's, you know, even the ITF guys, I remember Paul McFarlane did that video on his sidekick. You couldn't even see it. It was a perfect sidekicker. The world's best. Uh, and um, in the videos, you'll see there's a breakdown of techniques. Now, the Grandmaster just breaks the techniques down. He's not, he's not really concerned about the patterns, even though he simplified them. Um, it's more about the individual techniques and practicing that like you've seen in the other, other videos, you know, the, the, the uh, elbow strikes, the chops, all that sort of stuff, the punches. It's all about practicing at the kicks. It's practicing the individual technique a thousand times so you become like a, a Miyamoto Masashi with the samurai sword that you can use that sword in any position, any time, anywhere, any place. So that's how we practice. So what I've done over the years, I've developed, I've taken the DNA out of various patterns and the moves, and I've developed a couple of basic techniques which you can use with your partner. And Joel just happens to be the partner here tonight. So the first one is kick, you know, front kick, punch, punch, front kick. Now in the patterns, that'll be front kick, double punch. They might be the front kick off the front leg, double punch. It might be, you can do a whole lot of different combinations. But what I did was put that all together so you're doing it in a flow and we're not going to go super hard or anything here because we're restricted in space so you understand that we've got only a certain amount of space here. So the first one is kick, punch, punch, kick and that you've seen on the other videos but this is this time with a partner and the reason you use your partner like a mirror so it's non-contact, we're not hurting each other, I don't want to kick Joel in the groin and he doesn't want to kick me in the groin. 
uh, for obvious reasons. You know, probably he's had a few kids and so on, it wouldn't matter, but for obvious reasons, we don't get kicked in the groin. So, okay, we start off now, I'll start it, and then Joel will respond to it, but remember we're a little bit restricted, so in a normal class, we're a little bit, we can use a bit more power band because we've got the distance. In, in this video, we haven't got the distance, we're in a restricted area, okay. So we start with you know, kick, groin kick they'll never see. Punch, punch, he leans back slightly, bang, and the next one goes in. One, two, three, four, so Joel does the same. Kick, all, oh, bang, bang, boom. So in the training here, you go one, kick, punch, punch, kick to the groin. Again, one, two, three, boom. Right, now that can go to the chin, it can go to the groin. Also that kick can be a kickboxing kick, what I'll show you here, and I normally don't do the kickboxing kick in the air. We do it slowly because if you don't do it on a, on a kicking surface, you can put your back out doing a kickboxing kick. So we go boom, bang, that's a groin, no problem. One, two, and then boom, push through. Right? So Joel do that to me. So one, two, three, bang, push through. That's a kickboxing push kick. Now the next one we do is left right half turning kick now while we do the left right half turning kick like i explained before one of the principles the grandmaster uses is the old military rule of diversion attack so you divert with one thing come out with another thing that's the principle of every technique that we do in yunjun do slash healy integrated uh, self-defense academy and this one is left right half turning kick. half turning kick you do to the knee to the side up to the chin, depending on your flexibility, depending if you're like Van Dam that we are just talking about just then. So, okay, Joel just changes stance. I'm coming up to the jaw, so I go here one, two, and he leans back because I'm throwing the punches, and this comes a half turn, and he, boom, I've gone to the midsection. Right, or I go one, two, he leans back, boom, I've gone to the groin. Or I go up to the top, I go one, two, he leans back, bang, I go up to the top. Now, he'll swap around and do the same thing. So he's going left, right, one, two, I lean back, bang, going to the midsection. Two, one, two, up the top, boom, going up to the top. Right, so that's a very deceptive sort of way to do it. And when you're doing it normal speed, we just go back around, jump. When you're doing, I'll just do the punches normal speed so it's not just, oh, well, you see it coming. You won't see it coming. I'm here, bang, he won't see that coming. And the natural reaction is just what he did then. All I wanted, I might hit the gloves, I might hit his hands, and all I want is that back move, this one's in straight away, all right? Now, <clears throat> here's one, we'll just move around while I'm at it. There's a whole series of moves. One is how do you take out someone doing a turning kick? Well, remember I showed you the double X block before in one of the videos? Well, here, the, here is how the double X block works in action. As you see the double X, it goes through like that. Now, Joel comes in here. He's just gonna do, we're just gonna forget about the left, right. He's just gonna do a half turning kick to the jaw. One, I move out of the way. Two, I move out of the way again this time I'm gonna use a hand to wrap and strike. So I'll grab the leg, you watch what happens. So I move out of the way, one, I've captured the leg. Now from here, I can take him down if I wish, or I can use a technique, like a palm technique to the face. So we'll show you around this way. Um, probably, what's the best way to do that, Joel? That way again, so my back will be to the camera. So. He's going to throw that up, one, boom, I've done the double X, which is this one. Now I'll captivate the leg, one, I've got the leg, right? Now when I've got the leg here, I can use that to take him out or use the sweep on the leg, right? Now that is very effective if you learn to step to the side and you've got both elbows as protection. They can't do much. You've stepped out of the line of fire and you're ready to trap and grab. Now the other one, which is a little bit simpler, if Joel comes up for a half turning kick, I'm here, and he just throws a half turning kick, I step to the side. This time I'm gonna to step to the side, I'm gonna do bottom fist or hammer fist to the side of the head on the way through. 
Very easy to do. That'll be the last turning kick any attacker will do on your period. So just watch me doing slow monkey kicks. This goes bang, there. Just watch it around the other way. So maybe do off this leg. So I'm here. As he kicks, I step to the side. As he kicks again, I step to the side and smash. I use this hand to smash into the side of the neck. So when he steps, I just, as an illustration, I'm here, thanks John, uh, and I step to the side and then I just strike with the bottom of the fist on the way through. So it's boom, on the way through. That's countering to a half turning kick. More kicks coming up. Thanks very much for watching and we'll just put, do more kicks in the next tape. All right, Graham Healy back again. We can see you there now. We're going to do what we call the Bruce Lee flick and kick. Any of you should go back to Enter the Dragon and saw uh, the Bruce Lee where he did the flick and the kick. Uh, we're going to do that. That's part of the standard train. Teaches your front leg side kick. Also teach, teaches you the, the factor of the diversion attack. And then we're going to do a half turning kick to the knee, back kick, back hander. Now, these techniques I'm, I'm instructing you on as it is these teaching videos, there is a whole lot more to learn when you're actually in the class because I haven't got the time to go through the intricate details of why I actually do it this particular way. But in a class, when you come into the class, you, I will instruct you why and how we do them this particular way so that uh, nothing, you, the, 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 the person can't counterattack you. Okay, so in the background, you'll hear trains going past occasionally, you'll hear water taps going because we're actually in like our studio is in a, in a, in a set of units and there's a railway track behind as I've explained before. So don't, don't jump up off your seat and think there's a train coming through the bedroom. It's actually on the video, so that's when you hear that, let, you, that you'll know what it is. Okay, so um, the flick and kick procedure is here. Uh, Joel may, um, I'm here, and I what I want to do is get him, I'll just move back a little bit, Joel. As I flick out here, he'll lean back. I want him to do that so that I can disguise this lead leg side kick, which will come in like that. So just watch it again. We'll do it because we're restricted. We can't do the full thing. Here, I'll, I'll move in to flick at him. I may get him across the eyes. Good. But his response will be to lean back. Then the side kick comes in. Mid-rib, mid-section mid side kick. And when you do this with, with energy, it, it ooh, just pulls him back like that. And that side kicks in in a split second. So do you just go around the other way, Joel. You did that to me. So I'm here, I'm standing this way, and Joel's going flick, I've got, oh, bang, side kick. So just watch that again, here, boom, bang, side kick. So floating rib, very, very dangerous. So normally we do that, you've seen that on the videos, we'd normally do that with a bit of speed, you know, <laughs> speed like that. Um, but we're restricted in space here. Okay, the next one is half turning kick, back kick, backhander. So here's, a, here's your opponent. He's got this foot forward, other foot forward. Now it's very vulnerable there. So easy to take that leg out in there. So when I do that, it's a it's a very it's a snap kick. So it's designed to get his leg to make him move down slightly. And it will. It will. Especially if you get snapped in the crucial ligament there, right? Or the uh, lateral ligament, medium lateral ligament. So I've gone here, one, he's gone down a little bit. I've noticed that in a split second. And then what I've done, I've rotated back kick. Now when I rotate and back kick, I'll just do that again. What I teach everyone is when that rotation comes through, that you do a backhander to follow up. And the reason for that is that you're not, le you're not leaving yourself vulnerable with a back kick. You turn around with a back kick and always a mistake for people to step down. So we turn like we do on the camera, we turn around the back kick, bang. And when I step down, that back fist is there. This hand is up protecting the floating rib. The chances of that happens very rare, but the back fist is there to teach you to keep your hands up. Okay, so Joel's gonna do that to me. I'm here, uh, probably, which way? Oh, yeah, you can do it that way. Oh, do it that way. So here, I'm here, and suddenly he kicks me in the knee. Boom, I go forward. 
He comes around. Bang! Back kick. Boom! There. So we just do that one more time. Just control the back kick up to the midsection. So just push me a little bit. So, you know, for the demonstration. Knee. Boom! Oh! And then. Boom! Out of the frame. Boom! Back kick later. Back, back fist later. Okay, so that's the flick and kick, the Bruce Lee flick and kick. Remember, end of the dragon. And low section half turning kick, back kick, backhand. Very good techniques. I use them in the classes all the time to consolidate uh, a whole lot of techniques in just a few moves. So there's, it's amazing what I can take you, where I can take you, and how rapidly I can take you and teach you just doing those particular series of techniques that we, we, we did. Okay, Graham Healy over and out. We'll be back with some more in a second. All right. Okay, now uh, we'll get back to other skills and drills with the kicks later on with Joel. Um, we'll break those down in, 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 um, in later videos. But what we're going to do now is um, just counters to wrist locks or wrist grabs, throat holes, all these sort of things. So we'll do a few basic ones. Now there's a myriad of different ways to do choke holes, wrist locks and all that. Um, and I see when I'm watching these on either YouTube or watching other people do them, um, you'll see that a lot of people are cooperating and some people aren't cooperating, but every technique I teach you, I can guarantee you, doesn't matter how strong they are, that I will be able to do the technique on them. Now, I've trained guys who are either bouncers, uh, prison wardens, and also concreters. Concreters, those guys are using their hands all day and are very strong. And if you can break a wrist lock on a concreter, you can break it on anyone, you know, let alone a criminal. Okay, first of all, we just, the first one we do is the opposite hand. So we just get in a bit closer, you can see the technique, we'll try and show you them. So Joel, you know, even though you can't probably see our face, but you can see the hands, we'll get in a bit closer, Joel. So this one's opposite hand. So what I'm doing is I turn the hand over like that, right? So here, I turn it over and I grab from the other side. Now I'll bring that around so you can see it. There's a little bit of technique side of it. So here, he's got that hand and I turn it over into a lock that way. At the same time, I grab the fingers. Now when I go around to here, I've got him down into a lock like that. So you can see that? So that's one. Okay. Now this one, similar, but it's what I call the a keto type takedown. So we just move back so we can need a bit of distance for this one. He's opposite hand here. Maybe we move around here, John. Opposite hand. Then I counter grab his hand, slap the wrist, and then I spin around. So watch, I'll do it very slow. I spin here. Now I've got total control of him. So just go down, John. Total control, right? Now I can do the, uh, uh, you know, Stephen Seagull, throw him down that way and, you know, he does a big break fall. But in reality, what I do with that is simply break the arm. Uh, or put him in a control position on the floor, um, which I'll do that. We'll step back a bit so you can watch that. Same thing again. We'll do this very close to the camera shortly. Bang. So I slap, rotate around, take him down. You can see that. I've got him down here. Now I've got control. I drop the knee in here. I've got control of that arm. I could drop the knee into his neck, but I don't want to do that. Just control him in the, in the rib. And his arm is in what I call a chicken wing position. Thanks, John. So we just, I'll take that to the camera again so we can see it. The object of the exercises is for you to understand the technique. So here it is, he grabs my hand this way and I counter grab and slap. When I slap, I rotate. You see where I am here? Very easily done. Okay, so that's, let me just move back a bit. That's opposite hand. Now, if he grabs both hands, Right, you grab both hands here. This one I'll show you in close, we just watch. What I do is turn this hand up, grab the thumb root. Turn the hand up, grab the thumb root, peel it, then I've got him in a lock, right? 
it's this is why it works in ladies self-defense because we're working on the pressure points and the vulnerability of the joints so okay just watch that one again from here you can see the hands i turn in here grab peel my other hand goes over the top of his knuckles and I believe you me, there's nothing you can do, Joel, right? He's, it, it, I can just, this, he, he's down. Or if I do it violently, he's got a broken wrist, all right? Here's, an, here's another one. Both hands, same thing. This time I'm here and I break out of it. So I simply break out through the opening in his hand, this palm, I strike that other hand and here I hem a fist to here. So you just watch that, probably, what's the best way to do that? No, this way, sorry, John. So, okay, again, you watch it here. I'll show this close up in a second. Easy to break out, I'll show you how to do that. Once you do that, slap the hand away and then you come in with the hem a fist to the jaw. Not very friendly, but hey, that you never know what they're trying to do to you okay we'll get that one close when we come up close when you watch this close when i've done this see this hand here i actually break through the opening so I, this is what i call a bottle opener and then this hand here i then strike you can strike with that hand or the palm and it'll just come out then this one just goes and slides into the the jaw very easy to do very practical now Another one that we do, and we won't do all of them here because there's a lot of them, is what I call monkey comp. So Joel grabs both sides. I turn, I drop down. I drop down and just come over here a little bit, John. Like it's, I look like a monkey. Just think, you know, ooh, ooh, monkey. Then I rotate the hands out this way. Grab the neck. One, two, three. All right, so that's, what you call monkey kong. So you've got, you counter move both wrist grabs. All right. Now, <clears throat> here's one more I just thought. See, with these techniques, you've really got to keep repeating them until you can remember them like I'm remembering them. You know, Joel can remember them as well, but if that only happened from us doing it over and over and over again. Someone grabs me, I know what to do. Someone grabs me wrist, I'll get that lock. Someone grabs me from behind, I'll get that lock. But you will not do that if you're not practicing all the time, doing workshops, coming to training, uh, you, you can try and do it on the video, uh, but re referring to the video is good, but you've actually physically got to do it. So Joel comes around here and he throws, he grabs me by the throat there. So, you know, what people, oh God, you got me by the throat. See this palm, bang, bang. It's easy done. So as he grabs me, as soon as it happens, this comes in, the slapping palm, bang, bang, straight to there. All right, easy to do grabs both sides here. There's a lot of things you can do. If he's in close, I've got to watch the head butt, but both ears can get slammed. So he's in close, my head's down, bang, both eardrums will be perforated. Or I can use both thumbs behind the ears and drive them into the pressure points, he's finished. Or, that's, yeah, that's about it there. Or I could come through here, you watch here, I keep my head low because I'm conscious of head butts. I move this hand up here like this, the jaw, face, do a neck takedown. So you can just see that. So we'll come back a little bit further. This is not very friendly for people who, who provide they're in close. So I can bring him in close if I want to by putting thumbs into the joint, into the, uh, um, what's that joint call in there? We call that the, brachial. Not, no, not the brachial. It's not the popliteal fossa. It's uh, anyway, it's a little triangle in there where your arteries come out. You put your thumbs in there, I'll think of it in a second. It's uh, one of the triangles uh, in the anatomy, it will come to me in a second. So we're down here, here, jaw, back of the head, neck twist. And even when we do that, we can put the fingers to the eyes, make it more effective, okay? So if he's got a little bit of a longer distance, so he's gone here. Right, that, that's the classic one I can do then is the rotate and elbow. I always do it three times. So no matter how hard he's hanging on, I go, oh dear, I put my hand up like this and I rotate, it'll break that, that lock. I've got hold of this other hand and bang, I pull it in, 
bang, bang. Only one would be one would be effective, but doing it three times, that's, that, that's the way I teach it. So that particular one. Now, the other one that you'll see in a hotel, there's a whole series of these. I could go on and on, but we just shorten it down for tonight. The main one you'll see in a, a bouncer in a hotel grabs the person like this. You're, he's fighting someone, like you pretend you're fighting there. I come in from behind, take him out, right? Now that chokehold, I've seen a lot of people try and get out of that, uh, has it to say, not many know how to get out of it. I'll show you how to get out of it, but you've got to practice it and you've got to be able to do it rapidly and, and know that they've got you in that chokehold. If you haven't practiced it, forget it. You know, you'll be a victim. So, okay, Joel comes from behind as you watch that. Now, we'll do it slow. He's here. You see it? You watch side on. See where he is? He's got me in his hands over here, the scissors grip. He's got either side of the cartroid arteries. I'm going to pass out if he puts pressure on. He can just put me in a sleep. Oh, this is really a sleeper anyhow. So you watch what I do. So first of all, where he's going, if, if he did the scenario I said before, just pull me back, John. He's, I will go back. I can't do anything else. Forget trying to hit the groin, it won't work. So as soon as that goes on, you know they're going to pull you back. So what you do is this. I'll just do it very slowly. Of course you hang on here. He's not, that's not going to do anything except it gives you a bit of leverage and put the other hand there. Now, we're just getting a little bit closer. Now, what I do then is drop my shoulder. Drop my shoulder like that, right? So I just bring that angle around so you can see that. I drop my shoulder and I'm using this shoulder to push on his um, humerus bone there, the arm, not the forearm, the arm. Now, that'll give you a bit of breathing space and at the same time, my support leg pivots behind his. Now he's in trouble, right? There's two things I can do. I can keep the pressure up on this shoulder and pivot his arm, put pressure on that arm, pivot it through to here. Now he won't volunteer that. But what I'm trying to do from an anatomy and a physiolo physiology point of view, I'm trying to put him in that position because in that position he can't use a bicep, he can't use a tricep, he only has the rotator cuff muscles to use, which are very small, weak muscles. In that position, that's internal rotation, external rotation. So I'm looking at external rotation to its limit right here. That's the position I've put him in with my shoulder sitting behind the tricep. So we just do that again and I'll explain it through. Not, most people don't understand how to do this, so this is why I'm going through it step by step. So as he goes in, one, he's got the eye grab here, Immediately, I'm dropping this leg. I drop and swing around. And just come around, Joel, so we can get the camera. My shoulder pressure is pushing here immediately. Now, put a bit of pressure on, Joel. So he's put pressure on my shoulder pressure. See, I don't care how much pressure he puts on. If I've got my shoulder here and I'm pushing with that and levering that through, you can, have the, you can have Mr. Olympia trying to do that and you'll just crack his arm off, right? So that particular move is to be able to get out of what they call a sleeper chokehold from behind. And I don't see many, I see people hitting them on the foot and trying to elbow them. That won't work. I can do it on someone and you won't do anything. I'll be taking you out of that room locked up or asleep by then, you know? So that particular move, this will be the last one we do on this particular video. That's a very good one. We can also do a takedown with it. I'll show you that before we finish up. So when we do that, he's gone here. Now I might select not to go all the way through and put him into an arm bar, but I keep that pressure on. Just come around, John. And I've moved my leg behind his. Now I just keep the hold of this hand and the shoulder, and then I'll put my hand over his hip. Suddenly, I've got him in a position where I can just throw him down. Throw him down, if he hangs on, I go down with him. Strike the groin as I go down and the elbow and the head. You know, we won't do that in this video because we're, we're limited in the space. I need a third person with a, with a camera. Okay, so that one's like the sleeper hole from behind, a classic one that the bouncers use all the time, and that's how to get out of it. So, Graham Healy, Joel Roberts, 
Thanks for watching. More videos coming. Have a good day. Thank you.